privileged today to have Andy Harley, uh, a longtime LGBT journalist who's specialized in covering uh, European issues for many, many years, and has personally been at any number of Eastern European Pride events. Uh, and Eastern Europe, for those who may not have been following the issue uh, of late, is of particular interest to LGBT activists today because there's an important election that just happened in Poland uh, and a forthcoming election uh, coming up very soon that could really have a dramatic impact on uh, LGBTs in that country and for that matter, the region. Uh, Andy Harley, uh, welcome to the Gay Liberation Network here on Chicago Access Network TV. We're very pleased to have you coming to us all the way from Britain today. Well, thank you for inviting me, Andy. Pleasure to be here. Uh, Andy and I had the pleasure of, of participating in uh, a few of the Moscow Pride events uh, in the, uh, that would have been around 2011, 2012, 2013, if I'm getting the, yeah. the uh, years correct. Uh, but Andy had been participating in a whole series of <laughs> demonstrations by LGBT activists, often in illegal circumstances or uh, circumstances where while what they were doing was totally legal <laughs> they were threatened with arrest anyway uh, <laughs> and and uh andy so we've got this important election happening in uh in uh poland right now uh the president duda uh was running for re-election but didn't get the majority he needed uh, the other week. And so we've got a runoff coming on. Can you tell us a little bit, uh, for those who aren't familiar, what uh, the Polish political situation is like and this, what this President Duda represents to uh, LGBTs in Poland? Well, uh, the current president, you said President Duda, he's from the Law and Justice Party. Uh, or the PIS is the abbreviation for it, which is the Polish. And that is a notorious homophobic party in Poland. Mm -hmm. And if you remember a few years back, there were what was dubbed the uh, terrible twins, the Kaczynski twins, one of which was the president and the other was the prime minister and um, you know during their rule uh, things were hmm, should we say quite quite uh, bad in poland you know there's oh. been a lot of attempts to to push so-called traditional <laughs> family values in in poland and not just with respect to lgbt's but also women uh, attacks on the yeah. right to abortion. Yeah. And, uh, you know, currently, in, in the last six months or so, a lot of uh, towns and the smaller cities, they've declared LGBT uh, free zones. Mm -hmm. And, you know, it's, it, it's really shocking what's going on. And this is in well, 2020, you know, 21st century. Yeah. Well, and, and that violates uh, many of the standards that the European Union set up, doesn't it? Or is that sort of a gray area? Because 
Poland is part of the European Union and supposedly yeah. has to uphold certain rights. That's true. There's, there's two uh, groups in Europe. There's one called the Council of Europe that is made up of, I can't remember how many, uh, 50 something countries, including Belarus, uh, Russia, and other countries that aren't in the other organization, which is the European Union. And that's the one that my country is sadly coming out of. Yeah. Uh, now, the Europe, both organizations have explicit rules uh, that, that on equality and all this sort of thing. And uh, as you, you've been to Moscow, so you know that this guy that was organizing in Moscow, he had a season ticket to the European Court of Human Rights. Yeah, Every true. single pride that was banned, yeah. he took it to the European Court of Human Rights and won. But they always found another way to ban Moscow prides. And uh, before we talk a little bit more about Poland in particular, yeah. Andy, could you share with our audience the, the different countries, uh, pride events that you have had the honor uh, of, of attending uh, all over your Eastern Europe? But I think people need to hear that. What, what other countries besides Poland have you attended the pride events at? Uh, well, Moscow, uh, I've been uh, to uh, Hungary, uh, and these are all what I call difficult rides. Yes. And yes. then, of course, there's Belgrade, yes. where the first time I went, pride was cancelled, and it was, it was rightly cancelled because there was serious threats of violence and it came just after a notorious football match was played in Belgrade where some I think it was a Spanish or a French guys were actually killed by the by the riot so it's understandable that the first one was uh, was first pride was cancelled in actual fact we we did have a bit of a pride there. It was in the residence of the Swedish ambassador. Yes. And we walked around his garden, you know, with our banners. Mm -hmm. <laughs> but, you know, it, it wasn't the same, but at least there was something there. And there were quite a, quite a few local people were there, the, you know, from the gay community in Belgrade. And then this, the, the second one was another tear gas pride, and I've been to many where tear gas has been fired. Were the police um, firing that um, at, at, at the pride well, no. participants or at the right wing? It, it's the right wing. Oh, the right wing was fired The right at, wing at our fired the tear gas with the, with the police watching. <laughs> yes. yes. You know. That's the sort of thing that you get in some of these countries now. Mm -hmm. Well, Hungary today is, is uh, <coughs> run by a uh, prime minister who is every bit as bad as Duda. And it's a very dangerous yeah. situation there for uh, not just LGBTs, but particularly immigrants. Um, yeah. there, there is a, a xenophobic and a bigoted theme that is really been promoted particularly in Poland and Hungary today. Yeah. Um, well those two are uh, leading countries that um, that the European Union doesn't know what to do about it. They really don't. I mean they they could boot them out. They've got every right to boot them out but they they won't. Yeah. So Sort of then happens, makes a mockery you know, of, of their standards. What she's saying to the people, yeah. I mean, and our audience really needs to understand is, is uh, 
as uh, as Andy was saying, these are not just your usual pride events such as we're familiar with in Western Europe or the United States, or at least most of the United States. These are situations where uh, people are threat typically threatened with arrest, threatened with severe violence um, by neo-fascist forces. Um, uh, yeah. One of the prides that uh, Andy and I were at in, in Moscow, um, the, the fascists did attack us physically on uh, right on uh, Red Square, which would be the equivalent in uh, Washington, D.C. of attacking someone uh, right on the uh, steps of the Lincoln Memorial or something in terms of being just such a public place, and yet they felt like they had impunity to do this in Moscow. And, and that is unfortunately the situation, uh, particularly when he was regularly going to these um, pride events in, in, in the Baltic countries and, and so forth, where yeah. um, you were threatened, uh, you and your co-marchers were frequently threatened with violence. Isn't that right? Yes, oh yes. You know, yes, so um, not, just, not just violence, uh, though I suppose you could call it violence, but in in Riga, in Latvia, uh, you have we we had to lock ourselves into the hotel where there's a conference, and uh, they had to get a government minister to get a bus to get us all out, and he had to come and order the police to get us out. And we had uh, uh, chicken droppings thrown at us and all this sort of thing. And I mean, eggs. Eggs are always being thrown at, uh, at LGBT people in, in tribes. That would have been about what year, Andy, uh, in Riga? It would have been around 06 or something? Something like that. Right, 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 right. I, I, I think it was the same year as the very first Moscow Pride. Mm hmm mm hmm I'm getting a bit old and I can't remember dates. Me, me too. Um, I, I, did, I did just read that, um, I believe it was something like 140 Moscow Pride activists were recently arrested uh, yeah. for standing up for uh, someone who had been uh, arrested in the far east of, of Russia. Um, and they were all uh, rounded up under, a, a, again, a transparently false pretenses this time using uh, the COVID-19 yeah. pandemic as an excuse, even though they were presumably all masked and like that. So the, the, the travails of our, of our Russian friends continue as they do in places like Chechnya, which is part of, of Russia. But yeah. uh, sh shifting the conversation back to Poland, um, your conversations with Polish activists over the years and other Eastern um, uh, European LGBT activists. What were some of the things that really struck you as, as, as interesting and fascinating, the insights that they had about their situation? Well, it's fair to say that as individuals, the Polish people are fantastic. Mm -hmm. They're really friendly and, you know, not good, good to know. Mm -hmm, mm -hmm. Um, it's, it's just that they are sort of, uh, uh, should we say, led a bit astray by politicians. I think you know about that in America, don't you? <laughs> well, we've got no problems with politicians here. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, um, yeah. They, they believe all this stuff. And of course, mm -hmm. Poland is, is a very, very Catholic country. Yes. Probably the strongest Catholic country in Europe. And I include Italy in when I say that. And in, in they, Ireland, yeah, yeah. They've taken over from Ireland, the Irish mm -hmm. Republic, mm -hmm. which mm -hmm. was strongly Catholic. And now in Ireland, uh, you know, you you have full blown same sex marriage. So mm -hmm. and that was done on a referendum of the people. Mm -hmm. And, and, and uh, you know, at the same time, I understand that um, I believe it was the third uh, transgender member of parliament in the world was elected in Poland in 2011. 
Um, and so, and also the country um, doesn't have a formal law against uh, homosexual relations, if you will, uh, that, yeah. uh, that say like the United States and, uh, and Britain and other countries historically have had. They haven't had anything like that since uh, at least the 30s. Um, yeah. and, and so a lot of this isn't even so much a matter of what is the law and the books, but the social attitudes. Um, and uh, I mean, same-sex marriage has been uh, essentially made illegal in, in, in Poland, uh, but uh, the, the usual laws against uh, homosexuality have, have not been there any time in the last uh, yeah, that's, you know, that's eight years. Yeah, that's absolutely so. correct. One of the things I find um, uh, interesting is <laughs> that in some countries, um, LGBTs uh, seek out alliances with other discriminated groups in other countries they don't. The United States, aside from uh, the immediate years after the Stonewall Rebellion, unfortunately our gay movement has been largely very narrow, only concerned yeah. with its own rights and not concerned with others. But with the rise on, uh, of attacks on, uh, on immigrants in Eastern Europe, uh, which are like the number one boogeyman and gypsies and Jews. Um, the activists in Poland that you meant, uh, were, did some of them uh, express solidarity with other groups besides LGBTs? Were some of them, the activists you met themselves, members of some of those other groups? Uh, what was the situation with that? I got the impression at the time that they were not just campaigning for themselves they were campaigning for everyone that's great and i i went to the first pride in krakow which is university city in the south of poland uh and unfortunately uh the pope died a week before the pride so the people in krakow mm -hmm. cancelled the pride and we got there and there were, it's interesting because the organizers also had invited, <coughs> excuse me, mm -hmm. uh, a group of Israeli LGBT youth mm -hmm. there and they, and, and they arrived for the pride that never was. And so the, uh, the organizers decided right on Pride Day we'd go to Auschwitz. Off we went on two buses to Auschwitz where, where the authorities in Auschwitz had closed the main part of it, which is the wall of death. They closed that off for the public to let the gays go in. Uh, not, uh, because you see the gays the gay men were the only people that are never commemorated on the annual on the annual commemoration day in 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 the January. Okay, this is by the Polish authorities, correct? Well, they one were, assumes it's the Polish authorities. Yeah, but they, they, the run, gays they were never recognized the, on that museum. on that and that event. Yeah. yeah, but the the uh, those who uh, the, uh, uh, those who controlled access to the Auschwitz said that the gays could go in, in, in on that day, is yeah. what you're saying? Yes. Yeah, yeah. Which is quite, quite in, incredible, although I think it was a local decision. Yes. And the decision didn't come from, uh, from Warsaw. Yeah. But, well, and yes, just as we the, all went there. Mm-hmm. And we had this courtyard which the wall of death is in mm -hmm. all to ourselves for half an hour yeah well and and for those who don't know the history um uh, following the opening up of the concentration camps um the uh lgbt's were the one group of people who did not immediately get recognition from the yeah. post-war german authorities and uh uh 
the compensation that was given to other groups of, of prisoners, whether they be so-called politicals, people who were members of the social democratic or communist parties or gypsies or uh, uh, Jews, of course, uh, and, and others who had been brutalized by the Nazis. Um, and it was only, it took decades to win that recognition um, in oh. post-war Europe. Uh, so the, the whoever was the local authorities there who said that, well, the gays should be allowed to have their uh, their recognition of the sufferings of their forefathers and mothers, uh, that that was quite a courageous decision on their part. Yes, yes, I I would agree with that totally. It yeah, it, yeah. it was the big year when there was the uh, the big anniversary of the liberation of the camp. I see. Yeah. The concentration yeah. camp. Yeah. Well, and and the Polish politics had got has changed a, a fair bit since then. I mean, you've had a uh, for the last several years we've had right wing governments, but uh, arguably the uh, the economic situation in Poland has uh, given fuel to the rise of right wing parties, saying the blaming the immigrants or blaming the gypsies or blaming the gays for this, that, and the other thing. There's, yeah. there's been a huge out migration of young people from Poland because the economy has uh, historically been so much worse than much of Western Europe where people go to. Um, and, and I think that, you know, I mean, we see in this country the rise of Trumpism uh, a lot of it has been, unfortunately, the result of, of uh, promises made by previous governments to improve people's situations that are fulfilled. Um, and so people gravitate to the racism and other big, bigotry. Um, it's, it's, it's a real pickle um, because we need a different alternative, obviously. <laughs> <laughs> but right. so so two round 2006 you were in Krakow um tell 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 us about some of your subsequent trips to Poland I think the most vivid memory I have of uh, Warsaw Pride was the um the first one that was officially sanctioned mm -hmm. and um we all assembled outside the parliament building and uh, marched down some side streets. Down the side streets, you had the balconies and on the apartment buildings. And uh, just the ordinary Polish people were out on their balconies waving and, you know, mm -hmm. cheering us on. That was an eye opener, that was. Yeah. You know, yeah. these are ordinary people, not politicians ordinary folks and then a little bit later we'd march we marched down the main street in um, in warsaw and we just come off it and as a few of us noticed there was this very elderly gentleman dressed in his polish army world war ii uniform that hmm. didn't exactly fit him but he was there, rigid to attention, and saluting the parade. Wow. That's pretty amazing. And for those who don't know, the Polish army is, was pretty well obliterated during the invasion by first the Germans and then the Russians at the start yes. of World War II. And uh, uh, there were tremendous massacres of, 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 of certainly the leaders of, of, of Polish society uh, after that by both the Russians and the Germans. And for him to come out and to be saluting um, and, and, and breaking it against the right wing sort of meme of yeah. patriotism means macho, patriotism means... Yeah uh that that's that's pretty yeah. remarkable he was standing there rigidly to attention and i was saluting mm -hmm. and his all his wartime medals were glistening in the sunshine hmm. it's an amazing thing and 
About how many people participated in that year's Pride, do you recall? Because I, I, I recall it went from a, a, a situation we, of, of just a few hundred bravely facing down police who were threatening them and the right wing that were threatening them to then it was a, an explosion of many, many, many thousands. To, to be honest, uh, yeah, that actual pride was probably something like uh, uh, 500. Okay. And so it's the police years after. Were there. Yeah, yeah. The police were there to stop the right wing mm -hmm. from spoiling the parade. Right. That's, right. that's what right. the, it's, it's quite amazing because. Uh, after within four years, Warsaw was staging Euro Pride, right? Which traditionally is the biggest pride in the whole of Europe, right? Goes right. from city to city each year, and that's like hundreds <coughs> of thousands of people, yeah, yeah, yeah. I, I do recall. That. So, um, in, in, the, in the last few minutes that are, are left to us, because I think what, what the history that you have unfolded, Andy, shows is that things can change very rapidly from a bad situation yes. to a good situation. And yeah. unfortunately, for the last few years, we have seen um, a relatively good situation deteriorate. That uh, just because the laws say this and, and so on and so forth doesn't mean that that's what happens. And we've seen uh, women's rights activists, we've seen LGBT activists increasingly harassed in Poland, not supported by the increasingly uh, uh, partisan courts uh, that, that the, the ruling. And we've got an election next Monday, if I'm not mistaken. No, Sunday. Sunday, sorry. Yeah, um, this, this coming Sunday. This coming Sunday, where the it's runoff just... between Duda, the uh, current president, and his challenger, the uh, the uh, mayor of Moscow, um, uh, oh, Warsaw. Made, Warsaw. I'm sorry. He hasn't. The mayor of Warsaw hasn't been like super out front about supporting LGBT. Uh, what's at stake in this election? And I think I honestly think it's the future of Poland is at stake. Uh, the mayor of Warsaw. He's from the. Uh, civic platform political party and they are they are moderates i mean civic platform opened up um gay warsaw mm -hmm. you know when when that when they were in power um, yeah and i can see no reason yes the lgbt people in poland do have one or two issues, but uh, uh, with the mayor of Warsaw, uh, because he has actually said in his campaigning that uh, um, marriage equality is a non-starter. Sounds but like our democratic LGBT politicians are both <laughs> in Poland. Yeah. But you can't do everything at once, you know. Yeah. yeah. Well, I, 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 I was about to say it sounds very much like our Democratic Party politicians in the in the early part of this century here in the states, where they'd say they're on your side, but <laughs> yeah. <laughs> anyway, I think so things Andy, have I, to me so slowly. Yeah, I, I'm afraid we're going to have to wrap it up here. Um, okay. It, it's truly a pleasure. Um, and, uh, you know, we owe you so much for your journalism over the decades and uh, wish you the best in spite of all this COVID-19 mess that both the UK and the United States have made such a mess of. Um, yeah. So be safe and, and thank you. I will try. Much. And I hope to have a haircut in August. <laughs> okay. <laughs> <laughs> Thank you very much. <laughs> uh, thanks a lot, Andy. It's been a pleasure.